Now I'd like to request Professor Twin Hogg to deliver her talk on echocardiographic assessment of myocardial viability. Honorable chairpersons and distinguished audience, Salaam alaikum and a very good afternoon. I would like to thank IPDA to give me this opportunity to talk on echocardiography for assessment of myocardial viability. With Professor Choudhury Mishka's lecture, it's very easy for me to straightly start from the echocardiographic assessment of viability because we already know what is viable myocardium, what is hibernating myocardium. So I will focus how to assess viability by echocardiography. So I start with a case scenario. A 42-year-old male, ex-smoker with a history of old AMI, got admitted to our hospital with shortness of breath. On examination, his pulse was 98 beat per minute, BP was low, respiratory rate was 20 breath per minute, fine bilateral basal crepitation and auscultation. Other general and systemic examination revealed normal findings. Investigation profile showed normal biochemical and cardiac markers. ECG showed evidence of OMI anterior. XHS showed cardiomegaly with uh, prominent bronchovascular marking. Resting 2D echo showed there was echinacea in the antiseptal, septal, anterior, and apical area. Four chamber showing septal echinacea, apical, apical lateral, mid to apical anterior, and the epic part of apical inferior echinacea. In this patient, LV was dilated, and ejection fraction calculated was 34%. So, <coughs> angiogram was decided for the patient, which revealed triple vessel disease. Patient was referred for surgical revascularization, and now the surgeon referred the patient to Ecola for assessment of myocardial viability. From this point, I will um, um, talk how echocardiography help in the assessment of myocardial viability, and how can it help in the management strategy. So, Regarding among the different echocardiographic te technique, Dobutin echocardiography provide reliable sensitivity and specificity for prediction of hibernating myocardium. Here we see the how we can detect contractile reserve by Dobutin echocardiography in that patient. We can see that the septum and to septum improved after Dobutin infusion in parasitic analysis view. We can see that short axis there is improved contactility of the septum and to septum and anterior in the mid region. Here we can see the apical fortune review. There is improved contactivity of the basal and mid septum after dobutamine infusion. Here, apical two chamber view showing improved contactivity of the basal and mid septum. Thus, this patient has considered to have myocardial viability by dobutamine echocardiography by showing contactivity result. And this patient underwent CABG and improved, reverse, improved outcome after revascularization. Here is an example of <coughs> contrast enhanced dobutamine echocardiography. Apical two chamber view, we can see at baseline low dose and <coughs> gradually high dose of dobutamine echocardiography. Mid inferior segment showed this increased contractility, so, but with, with increasing dose, there was deterioration in the contractility in the mid inferior segment. So, this is an example of biphasic response improvement at low dose and deterioration at high dose. And the basal inferior segment, there was no change in the systolic thickening. So this segment is a scar or non-viable myocardium. We from our own groups showed that dobutamine stress echocardiography has good sensitivity and specificity compared with thallium-21 injection imaging. Here's an example of a hibernating case. Before dobutamine echocardiography and before angioplasty, the LAD territory was akinetic, and there was, uh, but it responded to dobutamine by showing increased contactility. And at the same region, there was enhanced uptake of thallium-21 reinjection imaging. And this patient, immediately within one week and after three months of revascularization, improved contactility. Thus, this patient has hibernating myocardium and improved after revascularization. We had all, all, already done the long-term follow-up after dobutamine echocardiography and the patient who had undergone revascularization, and we found that viability detected by dobutamine echocardiography predicted long-term improvement after angioplasty. However, a few patients with persistent low LVA following revascularization showed worsening in LV function and cardiac events. Not only the dobutamine echocardiography, but resting 2D echocardiography has also a role in the assessment of myocardial viability. Postoperative functional recovery can be, preserved, can be predicted by preserved industrial wall thickness and reduced industrial wall thickness and an abnormal increase in acoustic reflectance that is presence of scar tissue is predictive of an irreversibly damaged myocardium. 
we, from our own group, our study, we showed that industrial wall thickness was 72% predictive and expect evaluated preserved fatty acid, acid uptake in thin segments were predictive of post-reversal recovery. On the other hand, the concordant absence, that is, thin segment with absence of fatty acid uptake was predictive of negative outcome. Here is an example. We can see that before angioplasty, there was the infralateral wall had preserved in the industrial th thickness, but it was akinetic. But this segment improved after revascularization. We can see the improved systolic thickening here. This is the end systolic frame. Here, a thin akinetic inferior segment, there was preserved fatty acid uptake, that is preserved BMPP uh, um, uptake by SPECT imaging, and this segment improved systolic thickening, we can see the in systolic short axis frame showing improved thickening and global ejection function also improved in this patient. However, there is an, here is an example, the thin antiseptum is a discarnating and there was no, uh, almost no fatty acid uptake and this segment failed to recover after revascularization. So from this study, our suggestion is that since present day concerns are to minimize expense, it could be proposed that echocardiography would be the first test in most individuals. If there is adequate wall thickness, no further test would be necessary. If there is thin ventricular segment, then nuclear imaging modalities should be employed. Now I want to share our experience with viability assessment at our institute before surgical revascularization and a special procedure known as surgical ventricular restoration. Surgical ventricular restoration is a procedure for post-infarct dilated heart to reduce the ventricular volume and to maintain the shape of the ventricle. So in these cases, myocardial viability assessment is crucial to completely revascularize the viable myocardium and to exclude the non-viable infarcted myocardium from the dilated heart. Here's an example of a patient before SVR. We can see the thin discarnating antiseptum, thin septum and anterior wall, apical wall, and mid to apical anterior wall, and the LV is dilated. This patient underwent viability assessment and operative necrocardiography. We can see that except this antiseptum and apical, apical anterior, other segments were contractile that had contractile resumed by dobutamine. The so this patient underwent four chamber and two chamber view also showed that the non-viable apical, apical septum and the mid to apical anterior region. So this patient underwent SVR. We can see the SVR patch here, the white patch. It reduces, it excludes the uh, non-viable segments and reduces the shape of the LV. We can see that after SVR and CABG, the short axis view, it becomes rounded. Here, four chamber or two chamber view after CABG and SVR show that the placement of the SVR phase, reduction of the LV industry volume, two chamber view showing that the wall motion improved after revascularization and the contractility improved. So in this group of patients who had undergone CABG with SVR, their functional class improved, their ejection fraction improved, their industrial volume and ancestral volume reduced. There are some recent advances in echocardiography for viability assessment that is my myocardial contrast echocardiography to see the microvascular integrity, two-dimension strain imaging, layer-specific strain analysis, global strain at low-dose jobotamine strain echocardiography, which is superior to wall motion analysis, and three-dimension strain imaging, but they are till now are at research level and not ready for clinical application. So in summary, uh, we have shown that a strong association between myocardial viability on echocardiography and improved outcome after revascularization. At our institute, viability assessment by resting 2D echo and DSC prior to CABG and sur surgical ventricular restoration provided an accurate preoperative model. Postoperative echo showed reduction in LV industrial volume with improved LV ejection fraction in all of these cases, which contributed to excellent early clinical outcome. Thank you for your kind attention.